evening, this is Bell Gilles, and we are back with some more X-Plane 11 in virtual reality. Howdy, folks, and we are back here in x 11, and we're back in Bora Bora. And don't ask me why there's a regional American Eagle there. That is x doing its thing. So just to remind you, the scenery that we are using for Bora Bora and the Leeward Society Islands is by Maps to x -Plane. The link, of course, will be in the video description below. And tonight, our chariot for this evening is an aircraft that I haven't flown for a little while, but has recently received an update. So this is the Flight Advantage T-6A Texan II, probably most famous for being the trainer for the United States Air Force and, of course, the U.S. Navy. I am, of course, featuring the U.S. Navy livery. So why am I showing you this aircraft? Well, like I said, it's got an update. So we are now up to version, I believe it's 3.1.5 or 3.15 or something along those lines. It'll appear in a little pop-up commentary in the bottom. And what that update brings to this aircraft are some improvements, mainly graphical improvements on the interior of the bird. Now, I have heard that they are going to be working on the exterior, basically revamping some of the modeling and, of course, uh, some of the textures and so on and so forth. But I just wanted to kind of highlight this aircraft because it is, in my opinion, kind of like a sleeper hit in X-Plane. Of course, it does have the singular distinction. We're going to go to the front here of being one of the single most expensive aircraft for X-Plane. But is it worth it? Honestly, I think it is. As far as the flight model goes, this is, quite frankly, one of the best flight models that I've ever seen. I would dare say, and I'm probably going to catch some flack for this, that this is up there with uh, DCS standards of flight modeling. And by that, I mean it is pretty in-depth. In fact, when you get this aircraft, it doesn't have your traditional manual that teaches you how to fly this thing. They actually expect you to download either the NATOPS or the, uh, I forget what they call the Air Force version, the Dash 1, I believe. The real manual, basically, to learn how to fly this thing. And the reason why they do that is because their target audience, their primary audience, is in fact the United States military. So our Air Force and Navy boys and girls, and of course Marine Corps, they have the capability of learning in this thing in a quote-unquote professional environment using x -Plane and using this particular model. Now, for the average Joe, the price might seem a little bit steep, but considering the fact that it is rather in-depth, if you are really into this kind of aircraft and you really want to get into the nuts and bolts of how it works and all of the systems and everything, you're not going to find a better choice than this one. This is not for the casual flyer. Let's just put it that way. All right. But now that we've got that disclaimer out of the way, I should also give a huge thank you to Flight Advantage for the review copy of this aircraft. With that said, expect me to be brutally honest as always. What I love, I love. What I think can be improved can definitely be improved. And as far as the textures, like I said, uh, the external textures are going to be getting an update at some point in time really soon. So look out for that. And of course, there will be another update uh, coming. All right. But let's hop into this bird because I've got a little plan for today. We're actually going to check out another nearby island. And actually, we may check out two. I think there's one off in that direction that I want to see if I can do a touch and go on. And there is the other island that has a larger airport that uh, we're actually going to fly to.
All right, so without further ado, let's hop into the cockpit. All right, so we are in the office, and as you can see, this is the front seat, uh, the pilot seat. The instructor will typically sit in the back. Uh, we can look at that while we are in flight. And of course, remember, I am in VR, so you can expect my head to be moving around a lot. I'll try to keep relatively stable as I do this, and I am recording through the Oculus mirror, so hopefully the motion stability will kick in and take effect. However, no guarantees. All right, so let's go ahead and see if I remember how to get this thing started. It's actually been a while, so I may be rusty, and I cannot promise that I will do everything by the books. But I do know that I am going to need some battery power, so let me see. Uh, do I have that on a verbal switch? I do not. That is the boost pump. All right, so we're going to need to flip the switch there. And, of course, we've got our master warning light on. I'm going to turn on the generator as well. Like I said, it's probably not going to be by the books, but it will be the best that I can do to go ahead and get this bird started. All right, so we have electrical power, so that is a good thing, at least. Uh, let's get our anti-collision lights on. Oh, that's our landing light. Wrong switch. There we go. Anti-collision lights. Yep, you can see them flashing on the wing there. Perfect. Perfect. We should also get our avionics on. There we go. And everything is looking good. Let me check our altimeter. 29.96, which is where it should be. Backup alt. Same thing. Good to go. Now, it's surprisingly easy to start this thing. Since it is basically a turboprop, um, basically you're going to you know, hold down the start switch until everything powers up. You'll wait until the N1 gets over, I believe it's either 10 or 12 percent. And at which point in time, I'm going to kick in the boost pump to add some fuel to the mixture. And we should have a pretty good start just based on that. But before I can do that, I need to get my throttle up to the start position, which will show as ST ready on the little panel there. So let's slowly inch it up. There we go. You can see it says ST ready. All right, so we're good to go. Let's close our canopy. We'll wait for it to latch. There we go. All right. Okay, so now we are ready for an engine start, so cast your attention to this gauge here, as well as this gauge here, and even this gauge here. We're actually going to look at this one first, because we're going to wait for the N1 to come up. All right, so holding down the start switch now. You can see everything starting to come to life. We're at 6%. Twelve percent. Let's go ahead and kick in the booster pump. And everything's coming up. As soon as everything gets in the green, which it is now, we'll let go of the starter switch. And we'll just wait for everything to stabilize. The sounds in this thing are incredible. I have no doubt that they used a real aircraft to record these sounds, so pretty sure this is what it really sounds like, which is awesome. All right, I'm gonna put our throttle into the idle position. So there we go, we should be good to go, and now I can turn off the boost pump. There we go. Now these uh, switches, if you're in VR, they are a little small, so they are somewhat difficult to hit. But just keep that in mind. You can always bind them to switches, which I probably should have just used the Verpal since I already confirmed that I have that bound to a switch. Speaking of which, we can turn on our oxygen supply. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. A little green switch is now up. And that, of course, I do have bound to a Verpal switch. And according to our caution advisory panel, our TAD is off, our trim aid device. So we'll go ahead and flip that switch. 
And that is the last of the caution and warnings. Perfect. All right, while we're at it, we will get our nav lights on. That's the switch on the far right. And we should probably also get our taxi lights on. That is the switch to the left. Okay. So flaps, we're going to need those down in a moment, but I believe what we should do is just do a controls wipeout. Before I get to that, though, let me go ahead and turn on the GPS. We'll wait for that to fire up, and we'll get our UHF radio on as well. So we'll kind of twist our hand a little just to activate that. And that should be it for that. Now, a word on the GPS. This is a custom-coded GPS. Uh, it's going to pop up in the bottom the type of GPS that it is. There is a full manual for the use of this, and I would highly recommend you check it out. I have not checked it out, however, so I will not be showing you how to use the GPS. If there is enough demand, I can make a separate video once I actually figure out the GPS, and I will kind of teach you the basics on how to do that, but only if there is a demand for it. If none of you want to see that, then we're not going to worry about it at all, are we? All right, but we are pretty much ready for a taxi. So before we do that, let's go to the outside view and I will do the promised controls wipeout. Okay, everything checks out, so we'll go ahead and set our flaps to take off position. And I'm just using my lever there, so that way I've got free movement of the flaps. And we'll check our trim really quick. So the trim, you can see the uh, landing gear lever there is transparent, so that way you can see the trim indications underneath it. So yaw, roll, and pitch are all where they need to be, which should be perfect. And with this flap settings, we should just leap off the ground. All right, so today I have set the winds to be coming out of the east, so that means we need to taxi over in that direction and take off in that direction. What we'll do is we'll go around the atoll just once, and we'll do some shenanigans just to make sure that uh, she still flies the way that I remember. And then we'll head over to that little island, which I believe is a heart-shaped island. I'll show it to you once we go airborne. We'll do a touch and go there, and then we're going to head back this way and go past Bora Bora to land at the island that I have in store for us. I think it's called Rayatea. I don't know. My pronunciation is probably awful. All right, so we still have these little mirror things here, which are basically a camera that's facing backwards that shows you what's going on in the sim. There are some limitations with it. You'll notice that it does look a little bit grainy there. So it looks like TV being broadcast and the channel's not coming through all that well. The other alternative, of course, is to simply turn the mirrors off. But there's a problem with that because you'll notice that the mirrored surface is not entirely smooth. I think that's a limitation with X-Plane, though. I'm not 100% certain that that is a limitation with this aircraft. So we're going to keep the little TV mirrors on because, hey, they look cool. And the only thing that doesn't really show up in there would be clouds, which there's not a whole heck of a lot of those anyway. All right, let's go ahead and taxi out. So we'll get our parking brakes off. And as you can see, we are already moving. Now, very important, you want to make sure your nose wheel steering is on. So just hit the button for that. You can see the NWS on the left side, uh, just to the left of the clock there. So we're good to go. Give it a little bit of throttle. As far as ground handling goes, this thing handles how I would expect the real thing to handle. It is a little bouncy, however, the suspension or whatever you want to call it. It does feel a little bouncy, so if you've got your X-Plane set to uh, runways, follow the natural contours, be prepared that you can 
bounce around while you're doing that. But that is normal. We're not going to uh, penalize them for that because that pretty much is what would happen if you were in this thing for real. All right, so it will take us a couple of seconds to get down to the hold short there, and then we'll set everything up. We'll do our little bit of a back taxi over to runway 11, and then we will be ready for takeoff. So during the back taxi, what I'll do is the magic of editing and just basically set us up where we need to be. But once we get to the hold short, I will do everything else that we need to do to make sure that we are ready for takeoff. So throttle goes back to idle. You can tell there's a little ramp here. And we'll hit the brakes. See, she's a little bouncy there. Very docile when taxiing on the ground. But just remember, she's got that bounce to her. All right, parking brakes on. And let's see, we want our landing lights on too. So we'll go ahead and get that on. Landing lights to the far left switch. And there we go, those are on now. Let's get our transponder. We'll set it to out. You'll notice that we are squawking 7,000, as we should in this part of the world. And I want to say that is everything I need to have set up. Nothing on a caution and warning panel, so we're good there. Okay, looking good, looking good. All right, so back to the outside view we go. And like I said, we will do the magic of editing as we back taxi to runway 11. Okay, so we are at runway 11 and everything looks good to go. So you know what it's time for, folks. Brakes down, throttles up. We're gonna bring her up to about 50% uh, there. Looking good, brakes off. And we'll start doing the rudder tango here. And I'm gonna pull her up to roughly about 70%. See how we're doing. Airspeed is alive. We should rotate around 100 or so, probably around 90. And there we go. Just like that, we're airborne. Now, I haven't given it any stick pressure at all. She just jumps into the air, and that is amazing. All right, let's get our gear up. And of course, as you can tell, we're getting the low gear horning or warning. Let's get our flaps up here. And we'll give her a little bit more power. There we go. Ideally, what I should have done is I probably should have given her like about 90% throttle. But I find this thing takes off uh, quite well at just 70 or even 80% throttle. So either way, we're doing good. But now that we are up, you can get a better view of the island of Bora Bora, at least a central island there. Uh, of course, we've got all the various atolls around us. That is awesome. We're gonna climb to, let's see, about 2,000 feet should do the trick. We'll go a little bit higher, but I kinda wanna do some shenanigans and I feel safer doing that at around 2,000 feet. So here we are. We'll go ahead and trim her down a little. 
As far as hand flying goes, this thing is absolutely superb for hand flying. This is one of those aircraft that you can really put through its paces. And we're going to do that right now. But look at that. Now you'll recall I showed you this close up uh, in the last video when we took a look at the MD500E. But I think it looks just as impressive a little higher up. That's really cool. All right, so we're going to go this way here. And let me see if I can do a quick aileron roll. Nice. That is awesome. This is precision flying here. I really can't complain about the flight model at all. All right, we're at 3,000. Let me see. I kind of pitched the nose down here. I want to see if I can do a loop really quick. All right, we'll bring her down to about 2,500. Throttle set 90, and let's pull her up and see what happens. Oh, boy. Power's coming down. We're at the top. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's pull the throttle back. And we'll bring her down to about 2,500-ish. Yeah, a little lower than that, but you know what? That'll work for me. Awesome. And a victory roll. Why not? <laughs> Why not? All right, so let's continue heading around the island. And actually, you know what? Let's do some low altitude fun. So I'm going to pull the throttle all the way back here to idle. And you no doubt recall that uh, soccer pitch that we saw in the last video near the helipad there. We're going to buzz that. We're going to go over that hill and buzz uh, the other side of the town there. So that is awesome. Of course, the picture in picture should be popping up right now. So that way you can see what it looks like from the outside. That is so cool. I can't say it enough. I absolutely enjoy flying this aircraft. Out of every aircraft that I currently have for X-Plane, this one just flies the smoothest and the best. And considering the type of aircraft that it is, I'm kind of not surprised that it does. So yeah, really, really awesome work by Flight Advantage. Of course, I've raved about this aircraft before. And like I said, I know the price is a little bit high, but overall, they really put their heart and soul into this thing. So I think it's worth it. Assuming, of course, you are into this kind of aircraft. And that's really the only way I can justify it. If you're not into this kind of aircraft, then no, you probably won't be interested in purchasing it. But it is what it is. And I quite like what it is. All right, let's see if we can do a chandelle. We'll go around the airport and then we'll see if we can locate the island that I want to check out. We're going to do our touch and go there. So let's quickly go to the outside view. We'll gain some altitude there, and I think I see my island directly ahead. However, when we get a little higher, we should get out of the notorious X-plane haze. Okay, so we are at 5,500 feet. We're going to go a little bit higher here. See if we can pull her past 6,000. 
very light clouds today, which is fine because honestly, having too many clouds tends to kill my FPS, even in VR, and actually especially in VR. Well, we can do some cloud busting here. Just kind of fly around everything. And I'm gonna level her out really quick. There we go, so we're at 6,500. All right, so this is the island that I wanted to show you. I'm gonna move the nose out of the way so you can see it a little bit better. There it is. And it does kind of look like a heart. So if you got the bottom pointy side of the heart behind that cloud there, and you'll notice that the land kind of curves at the top. So it's a weird shaped heart. But one thing that you will also notice on the far side there is an airport that we are gonna try and do a touch and go. All right, so I don't wanna climb anymore. So we'll go ahead and pull the power back. And we'll probably do a tactical descent, you know, Navy style. So, like this. And we do have speed brakes that we can extend. So there we go, speed brakes are out now. And one thing you will notice with the gauges on this thing, if your attitude is way out of kilter, you will notice that a lot of the elements of the ADI and the HSI tend to disappear. That too is normal. All right, so I'm gonna let the nose fall through here. Our speed is around 140, speed brakes are active. Yeah, we're looking good, we're looking good. We're gonna bring her down to about, ooh, maybe 1,500 feet. We'll take a look at the airport, we'll figure out how we wanna come in, and then we'll set up for a touch and go, and I'll see if I can pull that off. Might as well practice it before we land at our final airport there. So yeah, once again, Maps 2 X-Plane knocks it out of the park with their awesome scenery. Now, I have heard on very good authority that they are working on the Tahiti portion of the scenery. I don't know when we will get that. However, when we do, of course, you will see it on this channel. All right, let me get some more airspeed going here. We'll set her up for about 50% on the throttle. And there you can see our airport. Now the direction that we are headed is almost due north and we know that the wind is coming out of the east. So that means we're gonna need to do our touch and go in the opposite direction. Even though this runway is really short, it is long enough for me to bring this thing down to a complete stop if I wanted to. But bear in mind, this is only a touch and go. So we're gonna do things accordingly here. All right, so I'm going to trim her down slightly because we are still climbing. We're at 2,000 right now. But there you can see. And this is what Maps to X-Plane is famous for, is doing the little add-on airports that come with the scenery package. So that way you not only have a really awesome main airport, but you've got other destinations that you can fly to and from, which I think is really cool. All right, I want to go down a little, so we're gonna pull the throttle back slightly. And we're gonna fly over the airport and do basically a run and break. And then we'll bring her down to a good altitude for us to begin our approach. Visibility, of course, in this aircraft is absolutely incredible. And I think that's one of the things that I really enjoy about this aircraft in VR is the fact that you can see just about everything. And it's even more impressive if you're in the back seat. I'll show that to you momentarily, probably after we do our touch and go here. Okay, so the runway is pretty much facing the same direction as Bora Bora, so that'll come in handy. I'm going to drop some power even more because we do want to get the gear down at some point in time. I'm going to start trimming her up while I'm at it. All right, we should be good for gear now, so let's go ahead and get that down. No doubt the picture in picture should have popped up, so that way you can see that. And I'm going to start trimming her nose up. Try to get that yellow donut. There we go. Let's set our flaps while we're at it because that will give us a little bit of nose down action. 
Well, technically it'll give us a little nose up action, but we're going to compensate for that. All right, there we go. And it still says we're a little slow. There we go. Now we're on speed. All right, so our throttle is at 40%. Gonna swing her around. We're at a hundred right now, so we're dangerously close to our stall speed. At least with this configuration, we've got a little bit more leeway. But I want to make sure that we also have enough distance so that when we make our final turn, we should be able to come in. All right. So how are we doing on the descent here? Uh, not too shabby. Not too shabby. I'm gonna pull the throttle back a little bit here, so that'll get our nose down. And I'm going outbound slightly because I want to bring us down nice and easy. All right, we'll just make sure that our donut is centered. So we are on speed, looking good, looking good. All I need now is a carrier and a tail hook, and I will be a happy man. Of course, this aircraft does not come with a tail hook. So yeah, <laughs> there is that. All right, let's go to the outside view as we make our way around here. Okay, so we're passing the airport now, and we will definitely need to lose some altitude. So I'm going to drop the throttle once again. And that should start our vertical velocity indicator in a decline. That works for me. So we're at 1300 right now. This is probably going to end up a little high, so I am going to drop our throttle even further. And that should start bringing us down. Of course, since this thing is so well modeled, you need to be careful whenever you are operating the throttle because there is a slight bit of lag time before you get that power back. So just keep that in mind when you're flying this thing. And we do need to add a little bit of power in a turn. Otherwise, we're going to drop way too fast. You can already see that our airway indexer is telling us we're slightly slow. We're not quite on speed. But... So far, we're looking good. I'm adding a little bit of rudder here just to keep us coordinated. We're at 800, so carrier approach altitude. Of course, we're in the wrong place to be at 800 if we were trying to land on a carrier. Should be at around 450 or thereabouts there. All right, but it looks like we've got a pretty solid lineup. So once again, I'll put the picture in picture up and we'll see how well we do with this touch and go here. We're at 600 right now, coming down at a rate of, ooh, about 600 feet per minute. So let's give it a little bit more speed. And we're basically just playing with the throttle here. We're not even giving it any stick input aside from laterally and a little bit of rudder because I did notice that when I set my winds, I did give myself a little bit of a crosswind, which was not intended. I just didn't know what the actual degrees were for this runway. But I think we got this. I think we got this. AOA indexer says I look good. Speed's looking good. Descent rate's looking good. Plenty of runway to work with. We're probably going to be a little bit bouncy because I feel like we're coming in fast. Yeah, airspeed indicator says we're a little fast. All right, let's chop the throttle, flare a little bit. Yep, there's the bounce I was waiting for. All right, but we are down on all three. Let's go ahead and give the power back. There we go. And we are looking good. Okay, I'm gonna get my flaps up. 
and we'll get our gear up momentarily. We just need to get some more of that speed to avoid that gear horn. Ooh, that gear horn. All right, gear's coming up. And I remember to keep us at 90% throttle this time, so yay. All right, but we are up and we are out of here. Now I'm probably gonna use the little X pad momentarily because I need to figure out exactly where the island is that we're going to. But for now, we're gonna head towards Bora Bora, which should be off in this direction. And we're probably also going to check out the autopilot. So let me see if I can get us trimmed properly here. We'll bring her back up to about 6,000 feet. And then we should be good to go. Just need to find Bora Bora again. It is awfully hazy here. One of these days I'm gonna to learn to turn the haze down here in X-Plane. I kinda like it because to be honest with you, it does look realistic. If you've been flying on a hot or humid day, this is pretty much what it looks like. You really can't see that far. Unless, of course, you know, you're in an airliner and you're like at 35,000 feet, then maybe, just maybe, you can. All right. Right about there should be good. And I'm gonna turn on our autopilot. So our attitude hold. There we go. I was a little abrupt there. Huh, interesting. All right, but we are heading in the correct direction. So while we are climbing, I am going to use my little touch controller here to show you the map. Okay, so this is Bora Bora. You can see we are headed directly towards it in case you didn't get that impression looking out the front. We are going to be going to this island here. So November Tango Tango Romeo. That is uh, Rayatea. That's how I'm going to pronounce it. If I'm wrong, well, correct me in the comments as always. So yes, we need to be headed this away on the J23 airway. And I do believe I can see our island right over there. So in the next episode, we're going to go back to helicopters. I've got a couple of other helicopters that I want to show you, but I think what I will do is I will make that our base of operations and we'll actually check out the island to the left there in a helicopter. So I think that should be pretty cool. And we just busted through my target altitude. So we'll go to 7,000. Altitude hold should be on. Yep, there it is. All right, cool beans. Now you do have a heading hold, nav hold, GPS, all that good jazz, but to avoid getting into a lot of that technical jargon, we're just gonna keep it simple. So we've got the wings level, and if I need to, I can always give it some side stick input that will turn us in the proper direction. But before we do that, let's pull our throttle back a little bit and we'll go to the outside view.
Okay, I think this is the direction that I am looking for, so we'll go ahead and ease the side pressure on the stick. And of course, she's going to want to come back to a wings level attitude. There we go. Perfect. I keep saying it, folks, as far as flight models go, I really cannot find any fault whatsoever with this aircraft. This is just an absolute joy to fly. If we had something like this in Microsoft Flight Simulator, oh man, whoo! Not that I'm suggesting that Flight Advantage should jump on board with the MSFS bandwagon, but I'm just throwing that out there if there's any other developers that are looking to create aircraft. I know there is a freeware A29, which is kind of like a step sibling to this particular aircraft. Suffice to say, I really don't think that it is in depth, or as some like to say, study level. But with that having been said, I think we need more in depth aircrafts for that sim. But since we are in X-Plane, I am more than happy to say that this will definitely scratch the itch whenever I have a desire to fly an aircraft of this type. Those of you who are longtime viewers on the channel uh, probably recall the FSX version of this aircraft. I believe Iris Simulations made it. And while it wasn't as in-depth as this particular one was, it was the same amount of fun. So really really cannot fault that. All right, we are getting ready to begin our descent, so let me just make sure everything's looking good. Fuel is looking good. Looks like we've got about half tanks. And yeah, everything's fine. Okay, so for the next episode, like I said, we're going to hop back into a helicopter and we're going to check out this island here. Of course, at the time of this recording, I have no idea what the name of this island is, so of course it'll pop up in the pop-up commentary below. Our airport that we're looking for on Rayatea is going to be directly ahead of us. Let me get my little uh, touch controller because I like to show you by pointing, so right about there you can probably see on the oculus mirror i'm underlining where the airport is and since we're at 7,000 feet we'd better begin our descent shouldn't we so let's get the altitude hold off and autopilot off and we'll pull the power back and since we are coming in a little hot we will of course activate our speed brakes Provided, of course, they want to activate this time. Nope, looks like we might be out of luck as far as speed brakes go, but that's all right because I do have us at idle throttle. So that should be good. You know what? Let's kind of check out this island just as like a, I guess, a preview of what we'll be looking at in the next video here. So to do that, let's go to the close outside view and we'll kind of go underneath the aircraft and take a look as we fly around.
All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. And as you can see, we are just about at the right altitude there. So I am going to pull our power back in preparation for us to land. Can't really see the airport quite clearly. And unfortunately, I've got uh, both hands on my throttle and stick, so I can't really show you with the touch controller because that would require me taking one of my hands off. But we're just about on downwind leg now, so let's get our gear down. All right, gear. What's going on here? One second. Gears being a little bit iffy. There we go. All right. Technical difficulties. We're going to keep that in the video because I am not quite sure what's causing that. I'm pretty certain it's probably not something to do with the aircraft itself. It is more than likely user error. But with that having been said, let's get our flaps down flaps seem to be working okay so I'm fine with that we have gained a lot of altitude of course so let's pull the power back and let me check my trim here okay so we've got the donut I'm thinking we should probably do another run and break as we bleed off some of this altitude let's go ahead and get our trim set up here I want to be on speed baby on speed just like we were at the previous airport all right so let's see throttle is at 30 30 percent that is and we're going to trim ourselves down here that will get us back on speed there we go that's what i was looking for we're back to about 900 feet. All right, so this is our final destination for the day, folks. This is Rayatea Airport. And it looks like we've got runway 7, and I'm assuming the opposite end would be, what, 25? Yeah, I think that is correct. All right, let me just do a wing wag here. Yep, definitely runway 7. Okay. Okay. So, we are going to bring this bird in. Uh, let's go to the outside view once more, just to make sure that our configuration looks good. Okay, configuration looks good, so we'll put some power in, and we'll continue coming around. We've dropped to about 500 feet, and that's the only downside to going to the exterior view to give you those lovely little cinematic shots there. We do tend to lose altitude because, of course, I'm not paying attention to the instruments at that point in time. But we're still airborne, so that counts. All right, 25 is what I'm looking for here. So right about there, we'll pull the power back. So that way we don't balloon up too much. Still saying that we're on speed, so I'm still feeling good about this. And thankfully, this is a considerably longer runway than the last island that we were at. So I'm fine with that. All right, so we are coming down now, so I want to... Give us a little bit more altitude here on this downwind. And you know what? Let's do something different. Let's go to the back seat and try the Landis thing from the instructor seat. All right, so this is going to be fun. I have never attempted this before. It sure does feel like it is a long way to the front of the aircraft from here. Ooh! But the view is absolutely incredible. 
Wow. Love it, love it, love it. All right, we should probably land this thing. So we'll put the power back in. Make sure we're not falling. And we'll slowly but surely bring her around. There's one of those uh, trademark maps to explain boats that are currently moving. That is one thing I really enjoy about this scenery is the fact that it does have moving boat traffic. If you were in a helicopter, I don't believe any of these boats are solid, so you can't actually land on them. But they certainly do look cool hopping around from island to island. All right, now it says that we are coming in a bit fast, so we'll go ahead and pull the power back a bit. We are, however, on glide slope, which is really cool to note that I can see that from back here. <laughs> I figured the back seat might be a little higher than the front, so yeah, there is that. Of course, I overshot the turn while I was busy yakking. All right, we'll line up here. We'll definitely salvage this landing. There we go. We're back on glide slope. Look at that. Amazing. And we'll just bring her in nice and easy. There's our little shadow. Notice that the shadows are still jagged. Explain. Come on. Fix your stuff, man. You were doing so great with the shadows, and then all of a sudden it's gone back to jagged land. And there's the bounce I was waiting for. I swear, one of these days, I will nail the landing. <laughs> it won't be today, though. All right, but welcome to Riotea. Ooh, and like I said, I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but that's what we're going to call it. That is what we're going to call it. All right, let's go ahead and give it some breaks. Beautiful, beautiful. And once again, maps to explain with the phenomenal Society Islands scenery. Really good stuff. Like I said in the previous video, the only thing that I can complain about is the fact that a lot of the trees are still those 2D quote-unquote billboard trees. However, since we know that uh, X-Plane's next generation graphics are coming, we can only hope that as part of that process we will get the 3D trees and of course all developers should have access to anything that is considered default so they can update their scenery packages. Oh boy, you know what I need? I need nose wheel steering. That would help, wouldn't it? Yeah. See, this is why it is so difficult for me to make videos like this for you, because I get so wrapped up in telling you about things that I completely forget all of my procedures. All right, but let's get our flaps up. And I sincerely hope that you have enjoyed this brief flight of the Flight Advantage T6A Texan 2. Of course, the link is going to be in the video description below. And as I stated at the beginning of the video, while it is one of the most expensive aircraft that you're going to find, I don't think you will find a finer flight model or systems depth in just about any aircraft of its type. Of course, I do know that, you know, we've got like airliners that are fully fleshed out, Tolis and Jar Design, and I think a new one called Phoenix or Phoenix or something like that just launched for the 747. And that's all fine and well. Of course, we've got our classic birds like the Fly J Sim, uh, 727, 737, all of that stuff. And again, that's all fine and well. We fully expect a lot of those to be in depth or quote unquote study level. But when it comes to an aircraft like this, this is a rare find. And I dare say to me, it is worth it. It is very much worth it. Of course, huge thank you to Flight Advantage for sending me the review copy. As always, even though I get some stuff for free, I'm still going to be brutally honest on what I like and what I don't like. And right now, I do feel like the external textures could definitely use some work. The leading edge in particular, I think needs to be a little bit more chrome. Right now, it kind of looks like somebody sprayed some silver Krylon spray paint on there. But with that having been said, they did tell me that the exterior is due for a massive overhaul. So look for that coming at some point in time soon. And at that point, I will also give you a third look at this aircraft. 
But since we are at our destination, that about does it for the video. So thank you, as always, for watching. This has been Bell Geode. I've been flying in X-Plane 11. And just to remind you what I've been using today, the aircraft is the Flight Advantage T6A Texan 2. And the video description will have the link. The scenery that we're using is Maps 2 Explains Society Islands, the Leeward Islands, including Bora Bora. We will be back in the next Explain video in a helicopter where we're going to check out the island that I'm looking at right now. And once that happens, I will have more good stuff to show you. Until then, if you enjoy what you've seen, please feel free to give me a like. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Definitely check out this aircraft if it is the type of aircraft that you are looking for. Or if you're planning on eventually joining the Air Force or the Navy, you might want to get a head start on figuring out how to fly this bird. But that's it for me. Thank you as always for watching, and I will catch you all really soon. Alrighty, folks. Ciao.